Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at a, another exploration ship and this one is called the Fly Explorer V2 which is this thing right here. So this ship features the same thing from the last video where it has wind turbines on it that will activate once you go and land and engage your landing gear just to generate you a little bit of power. It also has those two large hydrogen thrusters that you can see on the left and the right and they are fully detachable if you don't need it, say you just want to go around a planet permanently then you can just get rid of them and you can do that. It's got a few guns around the outside, it's got a nice large interior for you to go through, it's got some nice automated doors and it's got all the good stuff for you to survive in the long run. So let's start by going around the outside, then we'll go on the interior, have a little fly around and maybe crash this into the pirate base which is just a short distance away. So at the very front here we have got our glass cockpit which seems to be a very popular thing recently. There's our two wind turbines on either side and we have two large atmospheric thrusters being held by some slope blocks on either side here. If I just come down and drop a little bit we've got some rocket launchers, we've got a remote control and we have some spotlights followed by an ore detector just below there, nice and hidden away but we do have some controllable weapons there to blast your enemies. Below that we can see we've got some landing gear, double landing gear has become a favourite thing for me to do because it saves you a lot of hassle if you land hard and break one of them. We've got some wheels there, not proper wheels they're just the tyres on the wheels just to make sure you don't damage yourself too much if you take a hard landing, it's a nice little a safety feature to have. If I come up and around past this large atmospheric thruster, in fact which side is the sun on, I think it's on this side so we'll go around here. Yes, we've got a nice a creamy colour to this one, that's quite nice. So we've got a solar panel around the side, now this thing has quite a few solar panels on it but they're mainly towards the back of the ship, but we've got this one and one on the opposite side just for a little bit of decoration really. We've got our sensor there which is the first of many on the ship which are controlling the doors so you simply have to walk up to them, they'll open and then they'll close after a certain amount of time. Coming from that door we've got a catwalk which leads all the way down to these stairs which hit the ground. This allows you to get in and out without the use of your jetpack which is a very handy thing to have. And then just in front of that we've got a ladder which you can just jump and reach where you'll be able to get up to here and you could just go walk around the top there and do a little bit of maintenance if you want to do that. But I'll come back to that a little bit later on. We have this giant thruster pod thing which is sort of a wing that connects onto our thruster up there. This one is made out of atmospheric thrusters. We've got some large ones going along and then we've got a bunch of small ones to help us with a downward thrust. We've got some black carbon fibre blocks coming along the middle there just to break up the colour. As we come along here we can see we've got our conveyors coming from the main body all the way along to our hydrogen thruster there. If I just come around the side we've got some blast or edges, we've got some merge blocks and we should have a connector around there, there it is, which is how we're going to disconnect this thruster if we don't need it. Or you could simply eject it if it was too damaged and you didn't want to repair it up, you could just eject it out and continue on your way. So speaking of this thruster, we come across on these black carbon fibre blocks which leads us to this creamy thruster where we have hydrogen thrusters galore on this going all the way around the side. If I come around the front we'll have a large one, then dropping down we've got some more large ones and we've got some landing gear right there. So if we were to disconnect them right now they should just drop to the floor and those landing gears will connect and prevent it from getting damaged. On this side we've got some more hydrogen thrusters with some green flashing lights and if I come up and above there we've got some connectors and we've got some merge blocks for you to connect up to something else. So say you have a small transport ship, you could fly it over to here, connect yourself up and just disconnect from the ship if you didn't want to just drop it blindly. But now we need to return back to the main body of the ship and like I said here are the rest of these solar panels. So just behind those catwalks and conveyors we have six solar panels Dropping down here we've got two more and around the side there we would have seen a, another one. Yes we've got some more atmospheric thrusters there, some catwalks on the top of that one. 
We can see we've got some more landing gear at the very back, and we have a ramp at the very, very back. So this ramp cannot be pulled up or pulled down like the previous vehicle I did. This one is just a static ramp. But this ramp leads up to some hangar doors, which has a automated opening sequence where you press the button, alarms and red flashing lights will start, and then these will start to open up, which is quite a nice touch. We do have a lot of LCD screens everywhere telling you everything about the ship you need to know and what the buttons do, so you don't just go blindly pressing buttons like I usually do and wonder why stuff breaks. Just behind here, we've got these little fin parts which have merge blocks on them. I'm not too sure what these are for. I suppose you could connect up a smaller ship if you wanted to, but it seems very close to the body and a little bit awkward to connect them up. But they are there if you need to use them. We have some red blinking interior lights on the back of these black fins, and that about does it for the side. If I was just to come round here, we do not have the stairs going up and into the ship. That feature has been replaced by an antenna, so we can only get it in on one side. But we do have the ladder on this side, which is a little bit further to the ground, which allows you just to grab it and climb up. So you climb up here and come around and there would be the way inside the ship. So moving around and... Yeah, let's come up and above this first. So there are the solar panels, there is our catwalk which we can walk along. We've got a bunch of grinders here, so you need to drop something onto here. A trashed up ship, maybe? You took out a mini fighter, it got destroyed by the pirates, but you're still able to fly it just a little bit. You could bring it over here and just drop it there, grind it all up and get whatever resources you can out of it without manually doing it. We have a collector on this side, so you could just dump a little bit of ore in there if you wanted to. And then in the dead centre, we've got a glass ceiling piece, which allows us to look inside at that interior turret and a welder. We've got our auction farms, Gatling turrets, and towards the front, more auction farms, and we can once again see inside. We see there are stairs going down. We have this hangar door right here, which we can open up, which is a little bit weird, because it is just an open space once you've opened it up. So if I was just to pan through here, you can just get directly into the ship through here. There's no glass. There is nothing. Once you've opened that up, that is just how you're going to pump oxygen here if you're on the Earth-like planet, or you could use it as a quick escape route if this ship was going down. Coming underneath it right now, here we go, past these tyres, there's not too much to talk about. We've got some more wheels at the back there, I think I called them tyres earlier, and we do have a camera which is sitting right here behind the ramp. We can look up here, which is where the hangar doors are. And that just about covers the outside. It's quite a lovely design. I do like the thrusters being separated from the main body of the ship. It kind of reminds me of a lot of ships out of Star Trek, where they would have their thrusters just being pinned away from the body on a very flimsy steel rod looking piece. But with that all done and out the way, I shall get control of my character, which is standing on a laser antenna. And it's time for us to drop down and go inside. But I did forget the block count. How silly of me. So finding the Fly Explorer, which is right here. When it loads, there we go, the Fly Explorer. Does not weigh 12,000 blocks, oh no, it's a little bit less than that. It's 2,555 large blocks with a very high PCU count. So do bear that in mind. So to get inside, we've got two ways we could do it. We could go the proper way, of up the stairs over here, or we could go in the ramp. But first, we need to come up this ladder. Now, we're not gonna climb this normally, because it does take a wee bit of time to climb up this. There we go. We're gonna come in this door first, because this door is a dead end. So in this door is how we're going to access our hydrogen engines, and just try and repair up this large reactor if it took damage. And yeah, it's just a little, little dead end room for you to do some maintenance work in here. So there's that. It just goes all the way around the side for you to access the blocks you wouldn't normally be able to access in the main body of the ship. So closing that up and dropping back down, we can now come around to here. So up the stairs, we can then climb up these sets of ladders, which will take us up to here on the catwalks. Coming around the catwalks, we can walk down to this collector. Luckily, it cannot collect humans or I would have died right there. We do have the grinders right here. And then we've got our auction farms. We can walk around here, 
and we could, if this was open, we could drop down there and access the cockpit. But we don't need to do that. We just come up to here, come around, walk around here, and yeah, we just drop down to here, get into the hangar, and yeah. I'll just come up these stairs though to go in the proper way. So up the stairs, sensor will activate, the door will open, door closes, this one opens, and then it closes. All automatic, which is a very nice. So this is what we get. We get a fairly sizey interior with multiple floors. We got some auto repair systems in there just to make sure some of the vital stuff does not get destroyed so you can respawn on that medical bay for example. But yes, where do we start? I suppose I will start by closing up this so we'll come to this a bit later. So in front of the cockpit we got a bunch of LCD screens and a button panel. We got an LCD screen up there telling us what it's going to do. So number two is what I was talking about earlier where we could open up this hangar door and it will reveal to us the outside. We can just fly up here and now we're out. So yes, that is one way of getting auction in the ship. If you don't want to use the air vent on a auction friendly planet, yes, you just open and close that as you please. We then have three and four, which are to reset these screens over here to reset diagnostics and reset the floor plan. On this screen over here is a summary of basically everything about your ship. So components, power, oxygen, and raw materials and all that. So yeah, that's there if you need it. Pressing number one will open up to the cockpit, but I'll come to the cockpit later on. I'll just leave that open for the moment. We've got a large refinery on here. We've got plenty of batteries, large reactors, large cargo containers, our medical bay, assemblies, O2, H2 generators, interior turrets to keep you protected, cameras on the interior, cryopods, and we, there's our hydrogen engines where the door is on the opposite side. So around here, above us, this is where our grinders are, above us, so there's that. And we've got a few LCD screens to be looking at. So number one is to open the hangar doors on this button panel. There's glass here, we can't escape, so we are overviewing stuff that comes in and out. Pressing it, flashing red lights, alarm sounds, after a few seconds, the hangar doors will start to open. And there we go. The green lights then turn on, we get a nice blinking pattern, and that's how we're going to load stuff in and out of this ship. We can then press number two, which will then start closing it up. Red blinking lights, the alarm sounds, and it will close. Number three is to toggle the lights on and off, and number four is to toggle the connector on and off, which is that thing down there. I don't know why I looked up there, that's the spotlight. We then have this button panel right here, where this is how we're going to control the systems of the ship. So if we're just generally playing, we'll press number one, which will turn us into a normal mode where everything needed is turned on. Number two is the power saving mode, where it will shut down the hydrogen engines, reactor thrusters and everything else. Number three is emergency mode, where everything is shut down, batteries are set to recharge and it will activate the SOS beacon. Number four is combat mode, where we'll activate all the turrets, close all the doors and turn off all the antennas, just in case you're using a certain mod that allows you to be hacked through your antenna. And yes, that about covers this floor. We need to go down. We do have a little seat there that I missed, so you could have a person sitting there all time to make sure they can control what's coming in and out of that hangar. But now let's come and walk around here and drop down these stairs. So down here is where we're going to see a, a lot of the important stuff. So yes, we've got the programmer blocks in here, our timer blocks, jump drives, gyroscopes, even more timer blocks, and a gravity generator. And there's an LCD screen above there telling us our gravity and whatnot. There's our auction tanks, which we can see going along like that. Then just walking around here. Yeah, it's just a nice little setup and there is our beacon. Another sensor there to open up this door, which takes us to a recreation area, where we have a projected table projecting the current ship, our DLC sofa, planter, we've got a button for the lights, our toilet, we can view outside, an LCD screen telling us if we're taking damage or not, and yes, I have damaged the ship while landing, a bed, a fancy LCD screen with an image, kitchen, and that about sums it up. Oh, I opened the door there. Coming around and through this door, I open that manually, how terrible of me, should let the sensor handle that, we can come to the hangar and the armoury. So we have to divert to the left 
and this is our armory. We've got a projector up there, we can see the hydrogen tank above us, and we've got a bunch of lockers and armories from the DLC pack, and here is our jump drive if we needed to use it. Through this door is how we're getting to the hangar. There we go. And here we are, and we were standing up there earlier. There is a ladder here if you want to play peekaboo with the person controlling it. Yes, anyway, this is the hangar. It's quite a sizey room once you're down here. So you could fit a reasonably sized land vehicle in there, maybe even two or four, depending on the size of them. Yes, we've got the bottom panel there, which is going to control the exact same way as the one up there. So closing up the doors, opening it, switching the locks, toggling the lights and all that. And we've got another camera in here. So coming all the way through, back up to the front, it's time for us to look at the cockpit. But I'm reversing right now because I forgot to talk about the programmable blocks. So this one is the diagnostic program. We have our automatic LCD screens and we have our floor planner. And thank you to the person who made this who actually labelled these so we don't have to dive into the blocks and perhaps get them wrong. Very, very helpful. Anyway, like I was saying, time to come to the cockpit where we're now going to sit here. We do have some LCD screens around us showing us the jump drive and our GPS location. A button panel here to control the jump drive. So that's the distance decrease, increase the distance, recharge on and off and to toggle it on and off if you want to. But now we can just look around here. So this is our cockpit. Pretty sizable area where you keep your pets down there if you wanted to. And yeah, getting into the cockpit. So bringing up the tab, we've got quite a few options, yes. Number one is to turn on or off the atmospheric thrusters. Number two is for the hydrogen thrusters. Number three is to lock or unlock our landing gear. We do not want to press P because we have stuff connected via connectors and that will disconnect it. Number four is to turn the merge blocks on and off. Five is our welders, six for the batteries, seven for the reactors, eight for the hydrogen engines and number nine, for our rockets at the very front. On tab number two, we've got cameras galore. Number one, we'll view underneath our cockpit. Number two, hangar. Three, below the ship. Four, in this weird angle, viewing the thrusters. Number five, on the opposite side of viewing the same thrusters. Number six, to view on the interior to see if anyone is sneaking up behind you. Number seven is to turn the turrets on and off. Eight and nine are to control the hangar doors at the very back. And on tab number three, we've got our auto repair system, our gravity generator, antenna, ore detector, laser antenna, beacon, projector, and then stuff to do with the merge block. So there's that one, and there's that one, which controls, oops, oh god, I shouldn't have done that. It's basically these ones and these ones. Tab number four, we have got the merge and the connectors ready to connect. So I can press two, which will then connect them up, which is great. They're now fully locked and stuff will transfer between the two wings. So you can see they've been set up where we've got merge block connector, then on the opposite side we've got merge block connector. So if it was just to go and press number 9 and number 2, disconnected them. Pressing number 8 and number 1, well we're going to lose them. I think I pressed the wrong button. And there we go. They fall off. We can now just sort of take off. Maybe. I think we're jammed in here a little bit. Oh god. Come on, I can wedge this out. Here we go. There, we don't need them. We just fly around this planet without them. And I caused quite a lot of damage. So I'm just going to nose dive into this. There we go. So now I'm going to spawn in a new one. And we'll do a thruster test. So just dropping this in here. Um, Yeah, I suppose I could just spawn it right up in the air. It doesn't really matter. Might hit that little plane that I forgot about over there. So doing a thruster test, we are going to press space to go up first, where we have a lot of speed. Yes, and going down should be exactly the same. We've got plenty of hydrogen and plenty of atmospheric thrusters to push us along. Going forwards, we're a little bit slower, but once we get going, we've got a reasonable amount of speed. And stopping is very good. Going left... Is pretty damn fast and going right should be the exact same and there we go nothing got damaged during that so all the thrusters have been placed in a good position wiggling my mouse around a surprising amount of control actually it's got a lot of weight to it on the left and the right but up and down 
is really sensitive. It's quite odd, actually. It might be because of those um, thrusters being attached by merge blocks, but it is a very odd thing to experience. So up and down, very sensitive. Left and right turns like a tank. So now it's time to fly over to my good friends, the space pirates, in the same place as usual, and blast them with some rockets. So I need to have tab number... Tab number this one. And we'll just go off on our merry way. It does look great, doesn't it? It's like a flying... I want to say like a flying beetle, I don't know why. But it is good, it's got a great interior, it's got absolutely everything you need, and it's foggy. Did they add fog to this game? Hmm. Anyway, yeah, let's just continue along to this pirate base, the poor pirate base. Test out the rockets, our turrets should be turned on. Yep, and off we go. I mean, worst case scenario is I'm just going to uh, drop off the thrusters onto them. In fact, I'm going to get ready and disconnect them. And here we go. We're starting to get in range. What's our range? 1.2 kilometers. Start the rockets. The turrets on tops are doing well. I'm missing completely. And there we go. I should really build ships out of the glass blocks, like a whole glass ship, because they are really strong. Yes, let's just turn around here. And we're going to try and missile one of these other thrusters straight into them. So turning around. Oof, got some bullets on there. Just lowering myself. Turning off the auto damners. Let's release them, put damners back on. Too early. There goes the turrets. We've got rockets coming in at us. We might be able to do this. Oh, we're ramming them. Ooh, my. Am I still in the seat? I am still in the seat. Ooh, that was a good crash. I haven't done a good crash in such a long time. And it looked like we just plowed straight through it. Wow, okay. We disabled the Gatling gun, all right. Completely disabled it. And what about the interior of the pirate base? Well, they lost everything. Their interior turrets have been shut down. What about the poor little fly explorer? Yes, not much of it remains, but it does seem to be sort of usable. So we still got, what is this over here? This is the assembler. The assembler is still powered. We've still got a cryopod. Still got our hydrogen engines and we got the back of the ship. That is pretty good, actually. So if you did take a face-on crash into something, you would still have a semi-usable base. But that is it for the Fly Explorer. It will be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself. And I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye-bye.